everybody, this is Lara with your weekly video for the S&P 500 for the week ending Friday 28th of April 2023. I'm recording the video just after 6.30pm Eastern Standard Time, so we've got final data for the session and for the week. A new short term target is at 4279. My main Elliott wave count does remain bullish, but I am quite concerned now about the lack of breadth in this upward movement. It's led by large caps and small and mid caps are now seriously lagging. That's concerning, so I do still have a bearish wave count. The midterm target for the bullish count is 4506. After that, 4750. Long term target, 7742. If we see a new high above August 2022, 4325.28, if that's succeeded, then I will have quite a lot of confidence in the bullish wave count. Or if the NYSE All Issues AD line makes a new high above its prior August 2022 highs, if that happens before price does, then I'll also have a lot of confidence in the bullish wave count. While neither of those things are happen, have happened, we do still need to have a bearish wave count and we do, at the end of this week, have to take it seriously despite the rise in price for Thursday and Friday. The bearish wave count expects the bear market is going to continue. The final target for support, 3195. On the weekly chart, this is the main Elliott wave count. It is bullish. It sees the bear market over here and it's labelled primary 2, subdividing as a zigzag. When 2 ends, 3 begins. A reasonable target for primary 3 would be 7742, where it would reach 1.618 the length of primary 1. I have an alternate monthly chart which has a target for cycle 5, which expects it to be not so long lasting, could be over in just a few more months or a year or so, 5742. For this bullish wave count, cycle wave 5 should be unfolding most likely as an impulse, with primary waves 1 and 2, sorry, cycle 5 is unfolding as an impulse because primary wave 1 is such a good 5 wave impulse. 2 ends here, 3 begins, primary 3 may only subdivide as an impulse, so I'll label intermediate 1 incomplete. When intermediate 2 arrives, it may not move beyond the start of 1, below 3491.58. Intermediate 1 looks likely to be unfolding as an impulse, with minor 1 and 2, and 3 in its early stages, with minute 1 and 2, and now starting to... I've got a little bit of a push from volume at least, should be starting to build up some momentum looking toward the middle of the third wave. Let's take a look at the daily chart. We're going to look from this high and this low, the end of minute 1 and 2, this high and this low, and now the start of minute 3. Minute 3 will reach 1.618 the length of 1 at 4506. Higher target for minor 3 at 4750, it'll reach 1.618 the length of minor 1. All of these third waves, minuet, minute and minor, all must subdivide as impulses. Within the start of minute 3, minuet 1 looks to be nearly complete. The short term target is at 4279, where subminuet 5 would reach equality in length with subminuet 1. Draw an Elliott channel around minuet 1 from 2 to 4 with a copy on 3, look out for 5 possibly to find resistance about the upper edge. When minuet 2 arrives it may not move beyond the start of 1, below 3808.86. If we see a new low by any amount at any time frame below that price point then we will use the bearish wave count. On the weekly chart, this is a bearish alternate. It moves the degree of labelling in the zigzag down one degree and considers what, was, what if this was just the first zigzag in a multiple zigzag for primary two? What if primary two is not over and the bear market's going to continue? It's possible uh, intermediate X was also over here, but we could see it moving sideways as some kind of triangle or... Well, I really don't want to label a multiple. It's technically possible that X waves can subdivide as multiples and not break Elliott wave rules, but I feel, find that they very rarely do so. At this stage, it looks mostly, most likely that intermediate X is over here, which means intermediate Y should be underway, and within it, minor B may not move beyond the start of A. I have this as 1, 2, and a second wave may not move beyond the start of the first wave, above 4195.44. If this invalidation point, which is now really close again, if that's breached early next week, I'll try and see a different possible structure for intermediate wave X, depending on the structure within here. 
Let's take a look at the daily chart. The high of X up here is this point up here. So within intermediate wave Y, we have an incomplete minor wave A, probably subdividing as an impulse with one expanded flat for two. We need three, four, five. The target for three is for it to reach 2.618 the length of one at 3470. If two continues further, it may not move beyond the start of one above 4195.44. The target for primary 3 remains the same, it will reach the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of primary wave 1 at 3195. On the weekly chart, upward movement, mostly within the week, and it does have push from volume, so volume is pushing price higher, that offers a little bit of support to the main bullish Elliott wave count. There was previous resistance at 4160. Prices closed above that at the end of Friday's session with a strong close. Next resistance, 4260. This weekly candlestick completes as a hanging man. It's coming in the context of some of an upward trend. However, there's a really strong bullish implication on the lower wick of a hanging man and it Basically, it means we need to wait for the following candlestick to complete and to be bearish. And that makes a hanging man essentially a two candlestick reversal pattern. So we can't uh, rely on the, implica the bearish implications of this until we have that bearish complication and bearish confirmation. For the short term, I would just read this as a bullish implication from that lower wick. On balance volume is within a rather narrow range with a little bit of technical significance, no signal this week. ADX is at a really low level and declining, the DX lines are whipsawing. Price has been consolidating for many, many months, for over a year now. And so we need to wait to see a solid break above resistance or break down to new lows. Final resistance above really about 4260 and above that 4545. RSI is neutral, ADX tells us there's no trend, and Stochastics is just now entering overboard. Price is finding resistance up here, so we may see next resistance at 4260, a model using Stochastics for overbought and oversold with price support and resistance tells us to expect the end of this upward trend and the start of a downward swing now within a larger consolidation. ATR declining as price moves higher, absolutely normal behaviour for this market. This week we saw an 80% down day followed quite quickly by an 80% up day. Now neither of these are 90% days so this is not enough to indicate a sustainable low. It's not a strong bullish signal but it is overall rather bullish. We see a 180 degree shift from bearish to bullish around this little pivot low here so it is somewhat bullish. We also saw an increase in volume for Thursday, a slight decline for Friday but volume does still remain quite heavy for Friday and range is quite strong and it was a strong close. Look for next resistance 4175. On balance volume is also within what is now a technically very significant range. Let's watch this range really closely next week. We may see a breakout from on balance volume before price breaks out. If we do, that would give a very strong signal for price. ADX is now below, or it's above 15, it's rising up from low levels, and the positive DX line is above the negative. This is the strongest signal ADX can give. This is a very strong bullish signal. It tells us there may be an upward trend in a very early stage. RSI is neutral, money flow is neutral, there's a long way to go before this new upward trend reaches extreme. Stochastics is neutral, ATR declining as price moves higher is normal behaviour for this market and not of a concern in a bull market. When we look under the hood of this market though, we see some weakness. Price is making new highs on a closing basis but the AD line is failing to make corresponding new highs and Lowry's operating company's only AD line is also failing to make corresponding highs. This rise here is driven by large caps, small and mid caps are seriously lagging, this is not the correct behaviour to expect for a third wave up. We should be seeing strength and volume and strength and breadth, not weakness. So this supports the alternate bearish Elliott wave count. For the short term also this week, price is closed to new short term highs, but the AD line has failed to make corresponding highs. This upward movement comes with underlying weakness. It's led by large caps. This divergence is bearish for the short term. 
The NASDAQ AD line on the monthly chart has been making new lows for over a decade. This is very bearish, very long-term divergence. It's been in effect for a while though, and yet the bull market and the S&P continued. So on its own, this doesn't mean that we have to move into a really strong bear market. It's obviously hopeless in terms of timing. When this is matched with bearish divergence between the NYSE All Issues AD line, then my analysis would get really bearish, but not yet. It could develop further, it could develop further over several years. For the shorter term this week, prices moved mostly higher really, it's been an upward week, and the NASDAQ AD line has declined. This is further indication of underlying weakness in this upward movement. This divergence is bearish for the short term. There is also mid-term and longer term bearish divergence. However, there is strong bullish divergence between price and inverted VIX. Price is moving overall higher this week. Inverted VIX is making new mid-term highs. Price has failed to close to new mid-term highs. This divergence is really strong and it's bullish. However, between VIX and VVIX is very short-term bearish divergence, but I'm going to give more weight here to this divergence between inverted VIX and price. For the very short term we see it here, inverted VIX is making new highs, price is failing to make corresponding highs. Between VIX and VVIX for Friday, volatility of VIX has increased, but VIX has declined. This divergence is bearish for the very short term. That's it from me with your S&P analysis this week. I hope everyone's looking forward to an awesome weekend.